So yesterday's Darren Daly on choosing the right associations in life reminded me of a question my godson asked me on a recent walk and talk. He is in his second year of college and on his second round of puppy love. He asked, what should I be looking for in a mate? A mate, I asked, for what? Are we talking about uh, fornication or procreation? Because the answer is very different. Procreation, he answered, then added, not now, but eventually. Well, I hope eventually means post the age of 30. And then I told him uh, my philosophy around that, but that is for another Darren Daly. Then I said, I love that you're asking this question. I love that you're thinking about this, particularly so far ahead, proving that you will make a very thoughtful decision about this. This is by far the most important decision of your life. Who you choose to marry will be the most affecting and life-shaping decision you will ever make by far. Everything changes after that one choice. And I mean everything. It will affect every thought, every behavior, every action, every reaction from that moment forward, all of which radically changes the trajectory of what you can and cannot achieve, who you can and who you cannot become. You've heard the saying, standing beside every successful man is a strong woman. The saying you don't hear, but is equally true is, standing beside every unsuccessful man is a strong woman. That strong woman can be an engine or an anchor in your life. The opposite is true, by the way. I just happen to be talking to my God's son here. I said, now, before I suggest three traits to look for, let me warn you of the awesome force working against your good judgment. Your organism, your system, has one purpose in life, only one, and that is to procreate, to perpetuate the, the species, to propagate, period, full stop, that's it. Everything else is in support of that singular mission. It's nature's way of ensuring the survival of our species. Our entire cellular system has evolved around this one purpose in life. That is why attraction is so intoxicating. Your organism is trying to replicate and it will use biological chemical warfare to compel you to do so. When you are attracted to someone, your brain pushes the big red nuke button, an atomic bomb, of hormones like oxytocin, dopamine, and adrenaline floods your system, creating feelings of euphoria, attachment, and infatuation. You were literally drugged. Your brain just dropped a Mickey into your system. Drugs much more intense than Bill Cosby used. Still too soon, probably. These drugs overwhelm your rational mind. It impairs your judgment and leads you to make illogical and irrational choices. And no one is immune to these copulation drugs no matter how smart and rational of a person you are. Now, here's the problem. This biochemistry eventually retreats, it wanes, it wears off, and then you see your situation with sober eyes. And trust me, the picture will be very different. Along with the retreating biochemistry, the feelings, as exhilarating as they were, also wane over time. The passionate love phase, the one that created the intense craving for a person, usually evolves into a more companion-oriented, less obsessive form of love. The question then becomes, who is the person I'm left with once the love drugs wear off? And that is when you realize the importance of choosing the right mate, not just based on chemistry, but on character, compatibility, and aligned values and goals. Those are the three traits. One, character. They say opposites attract. That is not necessarily a good thing. We are often attracted to what we lack. We unconsciously seek out those who possess traits that we feel are missing in ourselves. A subconscious attempt to fill gaps or heal wounds. A shy individual might be drawn to an outgoing one or a person who struggles with spontaneity might be attracted to someone who's impulsive. But remember, a relationship is not a healing ground for personal wounds. It is a partnership, a companionship, not psychiatry. You need someone whose character you respect and admire, not just somebody who mirrors your deficiencies or fills your gaps. Now you have to decide which character attributes are uniquely important to you because what's important to you will be different for me and vice versa. If you remember in The Compound Effect, I wrote 40 pages describing the ideal woman for me. 
much of it was describing her character. I didn't want my opposite. I was really aware of that trap in advance. I wanted somebody who amplified my strengths. So I picked attributes like strong-minded, honest, straightforward, etc. My other warning is be careful what you ask for. You're likely to get it. And especially if it comes wrapped in a fiery Latin package. Number two, compatibility. After the initial euphoria, infatuation, and adrenaline-infused intoxication fades, you're left with essentially a best friend, a person whom you can share your life, your joys, and your challenges. That's when shared interests become critical. If you both love hiking or reading or simply watching the sunset, you're likely to enjoy spending time together when the initial passion subsides. If, however, you don't have common interests, the chances of drifting apart increase dramatically. Now, compatibility isn't about having identical preferences, but it is about sharing enough common ground to foster deep and a lasting bond. My wife and I like to do and don't like to do almost everything the same. We also have the same taste in almost everything. Interior design, movies, music, sports, travel, every lifestyle aspect. We have the same philosophy and perspective about the world, about people, about politics, religion, handling problems, nutrition, socializing, philanthropy, personal space, education, priorities, etc. I cannot tell you the million and one arguments and friction points that removes from your life when your compatibility on these issues are aligned. And then number three, values and goals. Most internal conflict within relationships springs from misaligned values and goals. This is when you're not on the same page about significant aspects of life, like how you raise children, how you praise and discipline the children, how you manage finances and prioritize spending, what your environment and household priorities are, your commitment to personal and professional growth, etc. When key values and goals are not aligned, you are in a constant mental, emotional, and psychological tug of war. So now, while love might be blind, at least in the beginning, you should approach choosing a life partner with these three traits, eyes wide open. So there you have it. As you embark on your journey towards finding a lifelong mate, remember to allow your rational mind to have a say, even through the fog of the biochemical war being besieged on you. Choosing the right mate is the most critical decision that impacts every facet of your life from that point forward. Take your time, ask the tough questions, and make a well-considered choice. Choose wisely. Happiness and success depend on it. And my very wise and experienced Darren Daly friends, what else would you say to my young godson and anybody else, regardless of age, because most never learn this? What would you say to anyone else to thoughtfully pick a great mate? Share your advice, either through warning, don't do what I did because this was the result, or through example, do what I did because this was the result. I look forward to reading your comments.